All right, so in today's video, we're going to extend our knowledge of solving inverse trig equations, so basically trying to find our angle given an equation involving a trig function. Um, but in this case, we're going to have some horizontal transformations thrown in there. Uh, what we've done so far is no transformations at all or, or vertical transformations. So before we start, let's take a quick look at what horizontal transformations do to our graph. So in the case of sine of theta, our graph goes up one, down one, back up, down, and so forth. One period is 360, so half of that's 180. All right. Um, if I think about then sine of 2 theta, now my normal period is 360, and the 2 is going to do a horizontal shrink. So I take 360 and I divide by 2 to get a period of 180, which means by the time I hit here, I've 180, I've already completed an entire cycle. So our graph does this, and then by the time I get to 360, I've done two cycles, and so forth and so on. Um, when I am dividing inside, so in sine one-third of theta, we are doing a horizontal stretch. So my normal period of 360 gets multiplied by 3, and I get... 1080, and if we think about, um, there's 720, so 540 is right about there. I only get half of my cycle even by the time I get to 540, and then I keep going, and that would be somewhere way out there. Okay, uh, and then finally, when we do a shift, well, let's actually let's just look at the at the shrinking and stretching. What does this do? So if I take a sample equation with no transformations sine of theta, say, is 1 half. What we're doing when we do that is we find the places where my graph basically equals 1 half. And if I think about from 0 to 360, there are two answers. And we know that should be at 30, because sine of 30 is 1 half, and at 150. Now when I do sine of 2 theta equals 1 half, same idea. Now from 0 to 360, there's actually going to be four answers, right? and, and we'll talk later about how to figure out what those answers are. Uh, if I do sine of one-third of theta, if I think about just going from 0 to 360, there's only now going to be one answer. There's two answers between 0 and 540, but there's only one answer there. And then our, our shifts also are going to change our solutions. If we think about sine of theta plus 30, instead of starting on the sinusoidal axis on the y-axis, we're going to start the sinusoidal axis on, at 30 degrees. So we start here, and I would end at 390 instead of 360. Um, there's my 360. And then if you think about sine, where's my sine 1 half, no longer is it at 30, it's going to be over here, it's going to turn out to be at 60. But we'll get more into how that all happens right now. So let's, let's try one problem. So here's what we've been doing. You should, at this point, be able to solve an equation like this. If we think about theta, solving an equation for theta is undoing everything that's being done to theta. So if I think about theta, what's being done to theta? I start with theta, and then first I take, so I start with theta, and then I do sine theta, and then I multiply by 3, and then I right, subtract 4. So when I am undoing, I have to go in reverse order. So the first thing I undo is the subtracting 4. I add 4 to both sides, and I get 3 sine of theta equals 3. All right, so I undid that one. The next we're going to undo multiplying by 3, and to do that I divide by 3. So now I have sine of theta equals 1. So that's undone. Now we undo sine. I want to get theta equals. And really, we're doing sine inverse. But we, And if we had a calculator, we would plug that in our calculator and get an answer. However, we are making you do it without your calculator. You are using your head. And so we have to think about what angle would give me a sine of 1. And the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So where are my opposite and my hypotenuse the same? And that's going to be right up there. So in this case, a lot of times we get two answers from 0 to 360. But here, we're only getting one. Theta equals 90 degrees. So there we undid some outside transformations, some vertical transformations. Let's look at a related problem 
So here, everything is the same except now it's sine of theta plus, 3 sine theta plus 55 degrees minus 4. So if I think about what's being done to theta, I now have, so I start with theta, I add 55 degrees, I take the sine of that, I multiply by 3, and then I subtract 4. All right, so again, we're going to undo. And so if you notice, the first three steps are all the same as the steps we did before, right? I subtract, I add, you know, so we're going to undo those things. And I'm going to end up with uh, a very similar answer. If I, if I think about this as being sine of something, the steps are the same. So imagine I'm going to add my 4, and I get... 3 sine of whatever is in there equals 3. So I've undone my um, subtract 4. And then I undo my multiply by 3. And I get sine of whatever is in there is 1. And then I undo my sine. And so I get whatever this is, is, we said, 90 degrees. Now here's the one more step. There's still, in this case, one more thing to undo. And that's the adding 55. Because what's in here is not theta. It's not this big blue box. It's theta plus 55. And so I have to undo my adding 55 by subtracting 55. And I get an answer of theta equals 35 degrees. It is always a good idea to check another answer. And another answer is always one period away. One period away, I would get the same y value. That's what, why it's periodic. That cycles through. If I added 360 to this, that would be way too big. So that is my one and only one answer from 0 to 360. There's infinitely many more answers. If you think about this graph, there's, there's always more answers because your graph keeps going. No matter what I'm trying to get, what ratio, there's always more answers because you just keep going. But for today's lesson, we're thinking about just from 0 to 360. All right, let's try another one. So here's a tangent equation. Tangent of theta plus 30 plus 4. And again, you think about this kind of as a big thing. That's going to get undone. So we have, we take our theta, we add 30, we take the tangent of that, and then we add 4, and we undo. So first undo, subtract 4, and I get tangent of whatever is in here. And that's my negative 1. I've undone that. Now I undo tangent, right? So I'm going to get the thing inside, which turns out to be theta plus 30 degrees, equals inverse tan of negative 1. Again, we're trying to figure this out in our head. Where would the tangent ratio be negative 1? Well, tangent is negative in quadrant 2 and quadrant Four. If you think about tangent as being slope, those two quadrants give me the negative slope. And I know that when my opposite and my hypotenuse are the same length, that's a 45 degree reference angle. And if that's 45, then this is 135, and this is 315. So I have theta plus 30. I'm actually going to pull this over here. So one option is that theta plus 30 equals 135 degrees. Or theta plus 30 equals 315. And now I want to undo my last step, which is undo the adding 30. To undo, I'm going to subtract 30. And I get my two answers that are solutions for this equation. Theta equals 105, or theta equals, what, 2... 85? Okay, so there's my two answers from 0 to 360. And it's a shift over. Imagine that, that so I've taken my normal tangent graph, like so, where this happens at, um, 1 happens at 45 degrees, well, this would be a positive 1, and I've shifted it over 30. So we get those, we're shifting. It's that idea of, I've then, oops, shifted where my answer happens when I shift my graph over 30, or in this case, back 30. All right. Now let's talk about, let's, let's, let's just start this off. So right now, I'm hiding what's inside. It's a mystery. So we're going to start 
by just undoing. So I get whatever's in there is going to be whatever angles have a cosine ratio, ratio of one half. If I think about cosine being positive, that happens in quadrants one and four because cosine is about adjacent and hypotenuse. So if this was one and this was two, well, that's my 30, 60, 90 with a 60. So my two angles, so I either have this thing in there is equal to 60 degrees or whatever's in there is equal to 300 degrees. Well, let's open up our box, see what was in there. It wasn't just theta, it was 3 theta. So we're going to take 3 theta and 3 theta is 60. And now I have to think about what's theta. So my last undo to get theta alone is I divide my 3 and I'm going to get 20 degrees or theta equals 100 degrees. So there's two answers that are between 0 and 360. When we are doing shrinks and stretches, and even actually when you do shifts, you always want to think about could there be more answers from 0 to 360? Because there might be, and in this case, there, there in fact, there will be. If you think about cosine of 3 theta, my period <laughs> is 360 over 3 because that's a horizontal shrink. So my period is 120, or in other words, I'm going to have three cycles by the time I hit 360. So there's one, there's two, there's three. And if I think about trying to have a cosine value of one half, how many answers should I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I've found two. I need to get four more. And then the question is how? Well, I like to think about one cycle gives us two sort of unrelated answers in a way. So there's my 20 and there's my 100. I get another answer off the 20 by adding one period. Now that should be one period away. So if I take 20 and I add 120, I should get another answer. And if I add another 120, right from here, yep, then to right here, I should get another answer. Add 120 to 240 and I get or to 140 and I get 260. And if I add 120 one more time, I would get 380. Now 380 is, an, is a solution to this equation given. However, my I asked for the answers from 0 to 360. So 380 is too big. It would make this equation true, but it is not on the interval that I am interested in. So I'm not going to include it in my solution set. Um, so we can do the same thing with the with the 100. Starting at 100, every 120 degrees, there will be another solution. So I add 120, and I get 220, and I add another 120, and I get 340. And I hope you can see fairly easily that if I added another 120, I would definitely be beyond 360. So you want to be careful when you're finding solutions. Here's all my solutions from 0 to 360. And you want to be careful that um, that you go forward and backward because there could be a, a solution past your first two answers or actually there could even sometimes be one before. All right, let's try another one. So here's my equation. 2 sine 1 4 theta equals root 3. So again, I'm going to undo in reverse order. So I'm going to get rid of my outside transformations first. I'm going to divide the 2, and I get sine of 1 fourth of theta is root 3 over 2. Now I've undone all the outside transformations. This is the point where I inverse sine in my head, or I go, I try and find angles. And I'm thinking about angles who have a sine ratio of root 3 over 2. First off, sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2, because sine is about the opposite. It's about the y. Where are my y's positive? 1 and 2. Or you can think about all students. All are positive. Sine is positive. The tangent and, and cosine. So I want 1 and 2. And I know that the root 3 is my opposite, and my hypotenuse is 2. So what is my reference angle? This should be a 60. This should be a 60. So I get two possible answers. One fourth of theta is going to be the 60 degree angle, the solution right here. 
or one fourth of theta is going to be over here, which is basically two sixties or 120. So that's one fourth of theta. What will theta be? So now is the time after I've found my angles. Now I, after I've done basically inverse cosine, what we just did, or sine, sorry, we did inverse sine of root 3 over 2. That's how I got the 60 and the 120. Now I can deal with the 1 fourth, and I'm going to undo 1 fourth by multiplying by 4. And I take 120 times 4, and I get 480. Again, 480 would make this equation true. If I take 2 sine of 1 fourth of 480, that's basically saying, right, 2 sine of 1 fourth of 480, well that's the same as 2 sine of, um, what do we say, All right, 120, and sine of 120, well that's this picture, and there we go, boom. So it is true, but it's not between 0 and 360, so we're going to knock that out of our solutions, and our only solution is this. Here, our period is quite large. Our period is 4 times 360, which means if I add one period to 240, which is going to be, what, 1440 added to 240, I am way beyond 360. So I don't have to think about other solutions. Now let's try one more with a tangent, because tangent is a little bit different in the starting period. So we're going to undo again outside transformations. 4 tangent of 3 theta is, um, we're going to add 3, so 4. And then I get tangent of 3 theta is 1. So I've undone my outside transformations. We're at the, here we go, 3 theta. And now we have to do this in our head. Where is our tangent 1? Well, it's similar to our last other question of negative 1. Tangent is 1, now positive, here and here, at 45 and 225. So I get 3 theta is 45 degrees, or 3 theta is 225 degrees. And that means, undo, now we undo. We've undone our tangent. Now we can undo what's inside. Theta is 45 over 3, which is 15, or theta is 225 uh, divided by 3. And so 3 goes into 22 7 times, carry the 1, goes into 15 5 times. All right, so there are two possible answers. Um, are there more? That's always the question with shrinks and stretches, or even shifts. Are there more from 0 to 3? 60. And I think about my normal period for tangent. Now remember, tangent is different than sine and cosine. Sine and cosine have a normal period of 360. For tangent, my normal period is 180. So that 3 is going to make a this period is 180 over 3, or 60, which means we start repeating answers every 60 degrees. And what that means here is if 15 is an answer, 60 degrees later, oh, there's my 75, that's an answer. Another answer comes 60 degrees later, so 135. And another 60 degrees later, 195. And another 60 degrees later, 255. And another 60 degrees later, which is going to be 315. Yeah, and if I go another 60, I will be too large. So these are all my solutions. And again, when we multiply by 3 inside, we basically multiply our possible solutions by 3. So if there were two solutions originally without a horizontal transformation, we multiply by 3, we're going to have six solutions, and that's what we found. And hopefully now you are able to tackle your on your own.